This is what student pilots struggle with the most when it comes to not just perfecting the approach to landing, but also spot landings. Let's say you're getting pretty good at controlling your total energy, meaning you can consistently arrive at your aiming point, but you're constantly floating way past your touchdown point or settling to the ground too quickly or abruptly. Well, what's likely happening here? Well, the variable that causes you to overshoot your touchdown point the most is how much airspeed you're carrying into each landing. If your final approach speed in a Cessna 172 is 65 knots, you will float significantly longer than if your approach was done at 60 knots. Well, this leads me to the topic of this video. How do we best control the amount of each type of energy all the way down to our touchdown point? Well, I'm gonna answer it for you right now. The answer to have the most control over each type of energy when coming into land is utilizing the technique, pitch for airspeed, and power for altitude. We need to do this when we are on the backside of the power curve, which puts us in the region of reverse command. And if none of that makes sense to you, that's okay, because in this video, we're gonna break down the power curve, what the region of reverse command means, and how to properly use pitch for airspeed and power for altitude in some various scenarios. And if you'd like an even more in-depth dive into these topics, check out chapter four and chapter nine of the Airplane Flying Handbook linked below. Starting off with the power curve, or what it's technically called the power required curve. It's essentially a graph with the x-axis being airspeed and the y-axis being power, which then gives us this line of the power required to fly at a given airspeed. This power required line is also a function of aerodynamic drag, which helps us figure out the airspeed where we create the least amount of drag. It also tells us the faster we go, the more drag there is, as well as the slower we go, the more drag there is. That's because there are two types of drag. Parasite drag, which increases at the square of our airspeed, and induced drag, or sometimes it's called pressure drag, which is a byproduct of lift, and it increases at slower airspeeds. So look, this graph tells us it takes more power to fly faster, but it also takes more power to fly slower because of induced drag. Well, then what does this low point mean? This represents the airspeed that the airplane has the least amount of drag and it is known as the LD max, meaning the best lift to drag ratio. It's also the best glide speed. So in the event you lose your engine and you're now a glider pilot, this is the airspeed that will take you the furthest distance. In the Cessna 172, this speed is typically 65 knots. And fun fact slash pro tip, a slightly slower speed than that is referred to as our minimum sink, which will keep you in the air longer than best glide. So anyway, now if we draw a line through the LD max to separate the power curve, we get a front side of the power curve and a backside of the power curve. The front is where everything as far as command inputs to the throttle and elevator are normal, like in cruise flight. If I add power in cruise flight, I will go faster. And if I pull back on the yoke in cruise flight, I will climb. They do affect each other slightly, which we'll talk about in a moment, but we're talking about what gives us the most control right now. So then on the backside of the power curve, meaning when we're slower than best glide, we're in what's called the region of reverse command. Instead of using our power to control our speed or our pitch to control our altitude, we actually do the reverse. We use pitch for airspeed and power for altitude. So what does that mean? Well, if I'm a little slow, say getting close to this aerodynamic stall line, then what's gonna give me the most control and immediate response over my airspeed to keep this airplane flying? Well, that's pitch. If I lower my nose, so I'm no longer fighting gravity, that will immediately increase my airspeed and keep my wings flying. But keep in mind, you'll need enough potential energy to avoid a situation that you don't wanna be in. Now, if I'm on an approach and my speed is where it needs to be, but I'm way above the glide path, I need to look to my throttle or power to control my altitude. There's a helpful table in chapter four of the airplane flying handbook called the energy state matrix. It shows all the different scenarios you could possibly be in when conducting your approach. It shows airspeed on the x-axis up here and altitude on the y-axis. The desired airspeed for a stabilized approach is shown in the middle of the airspeed axis and the desired altitude is shown in the middle of the altitude axis. Where they meet in the center represents an approach conducted at the proper airspeed as well as on the proper glide path. But on this matrix, it talks about the approach in terms of the different types of energies, potential and kinetic, like we spoke about in the last video. They lay it out this way in order to show us where we are on the total energy scale for a more energy-centered approach, like they talk about in the Airplane Flying Handbook. Obviously, in the perfect world, we want the correct amount of potential and kinetic energy the entire time. But being a great pilot isn't always about being perfect. It's how we go about mitigating risk and our decisions we make when we find ourselves in imperfect situations, thereby giving us the old saying, pitch for airspeed and power for altitude to get us out of potential hazardous situations. Plus, there's always a third option. And if you haven't heard possibly the greatest song in aviation, I'll link that below. So let's quickly talk about two common scenarios on this matrix, and then I want you to study this at home so you have an idea of what to do when you encounter any of these situations on this matrix. Let's look at low and slow for a good one. We have a low amount of both kinetic and potential energy. So what are the options here for salvaging this approach? Well, I need to add more total energy into the system, but let's focus on one at a time. To increase potential energy, I can add throttle, which will either slow my descent rate enough, or it'll climb me 
snake into the proper glide path. But what happens to pitch when I increase the throttle? Well, it makes the nose want to shoot up in order to maintain the same trimmed airspeed you were just flying before you adjusted the throttle. And if you don't know what I mean by trimming for an airspeed, go back and watch the how to descend video in section three of the course. But anyway, adding throttle in general just makes the nose want to pitch up more. And so you'll need to also fly a lower pitch in order to let the airplane gain speed again. So the answer is both pitch and power. And this can get pretty daunting when you're already close to the ground and your reaction needs to be pushing towards the earth in that situation. But the problem with pitch for airspeed and power for altitude, even in this scenario, is if I lower my pitch far enough in order to gain that airspeed, pitch for airspeed, I will also be decreasing my potential energy or altitude and possibly not get my potential energy to the point it needs to be. So the point is, is that even on the backside of the power curve, pitch affects both airspeed and altitude and power affects both airspeed and altitude too. Because if you remember from the last video, it's one of two factors to add more total energy into the system, which is thrust and drag. So I want you to still use pitch for airspeed and power for altitude. Just keep in mind you're affecting both types of energies by manipulating the elevator or the throttle. Let's look at one last box in the matrix here to bring this home for you. Let's pick one where the kinetic energy is where it needs to be, but there is too much potential energy. Tell me, what are our options for reducing the total energy into the center green space here? Well, just going off of pitch for airspeed and power for altitude, power would be the go-to here. Reducing the power would increase our descent rate, thereby reducing our potential energy into the green. And if we maintained our speed by letting the nose change normally with the throttle reduction, then eventually we should have the desired amount of both kinetic and potential energy. But there's always a third option. Remember from the last video, the total energy is the sum of thrust and drag. So in the first solution, I reduce the throttle, but another option is to increase the drag. And like I mentioned in part one, that's using either high lift drag devices such as flaps or putting the airplane into a forward slip, which is covered later in the course. So in this video, you learned about the power required curve. You also learned about the LD max, which splits the front and the backside of the power curve. The backside of the power curve being the region of reverse command where it takes more power to fly slower because of induced drag, which ultimately helps us know how to control the airplane by using pitch for airspeed and power for altitude. And finally, you also learned about the energy state matrix located in chapter four of the airplane flying handbook, which shows you how to have a more energy centered approach to landings rather than the binary pitch for airspeed and power for altitude. Comment below if you have any questions and we'll catch in the next video. See ya. And one last thing before you go, this is just a sneak peek inside of our Landings Mastery mini course. If you want to learn more about it, you can click the link below. And it would also mean the world to me if you hit that like button, sent this to a fellow student pilot, and subscribe to our channel. Peace.